All right, so hi once again, my name is Adriana. Um, I'm coming to you from um, Lekwungen Territory and tonight we're gonna be talking about clergy residence exemptions, which is some very exciting stuff. Um, so first of all, um, I realized I didn't have a poll set up, but just because it's been a bit of a meeting, um, I just wanted to see how, what everyone's kind of knowledge or familiarity or feelings towards doing taxes are in general. Is it one, confusion? Two, do you feel anger? Three, sadness? Four, stress? Oh, that should have been a five, but um, do you feel like competent? It's okay. And then six, excitement. So um, just if you want to drop in the chat, um, which, how you feel about all this, please do so because I'd love to know. I was not expecting any sixes, so that's pretty good. Quite a few fours, okay. Indifference, nice, awesome. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Um, so clergy residence exemptions. So these are deductions that are available to members of religious clergy um, for their housing costs. Um, so when members of religious clergy are uh, filling out their taxes, um, they are able to claim um, the amount of their housing costs. So um, how much rent is or the fair rental value and utilities. Um, and they're able to deduct that cost um, from their taxes. Um, so clergy residence exemptions are also outlined in section eight of the Income Tax Act. Um, and they are overseen by the Canada Revenue Agency. Um, they were also introduced in 1949 in the House of Commons. Um, and a lot of the initial debate, a lot of the language was very centered around Christian denominations um, as well. There was some debate as to whether or not clergy should even be paying um, taxes in general, because um, as some members um, put it, it is a privilege and an honor to bear any extra burden of taxation, which would become necessary by exempting these men who render such signal service in the religious life of our nation. Um, so it was um, presumed that uh, members of clergy are automatically doing good, therefore um, we should give them this tax break. Um, um, additional, um, instances and changes to clergy residence exemptions over the years also included the addition of a functions test. So initially you just had to prove that you were a member of a religious clergy, et cetera. Um, and the functions test was added um, in order to ensure that um, those receiving the exemptions were people who were um, in charge of work ministering or doing administrative work with a congregation directly. Um, as well, a more recent change in the early 2000s was the, at the addition of limits to the amount available for a deduction. Um, so why are we talking about CREs? Um, why do we have a problem with them? So overall, um, when you're giving someone a tax exemption, in a way, you're kind of signaling an endorsement. You're saying this person or this entity is doing something that contributes to the public good. Therefore, this is something that um, we should help them out on, we should give them a break, et cetera. And there's this automatic presumption that because um, that religion is an automatic good and therefore um, these members of religious clergy should um, receive um, kind of um, some help. Um, as well, the state has a um, duty of religious neutrality. And especially when you look at kind of the historical um, debates and transcripts from the House of Commons and the intent of legislation, it really is seen as a way to um, endorse and prop up and advance religion as well. Um, and the state should not be doing that. Um, as well, within the legislation, um, Christianity is used as a benchmark um, and as a um, uh, is seen in the initial spirit, um, pun intended, of the legislation and like the debate around there, as well as the language of the legislation. And I've just put a kind of snippet of what you can find in the Income Tax Act or the CRA's kind of overall guidances um, of who is able to receive a clergy residence exemption. So um, one, 
the status test, you have to be a member of a clergy, a religious order, a religious minister, or a religious minister of a religious denomination. And then secondly, there's the functions test. So you have to be in charge of a diocese, parish, or congregation. Um, you have to be responsible for ministering to that um, organization. And you have to be, um, or you have to be engaged fully in um, administrative work to prop up that religious order or denomination. And when you look at the language, um, terms like diocese or parish are um, very Christian terms. Um, as well, um, evolving court cases over the years have forced the state to weigh in on faith issues. So when you look at some of the significant cases um, regarding um, clergy residence exemptions, um, for example, the most recent um, one, which I discussed in depth in the final report is um, the Lichtman case, which was the case of um, some Jewish rabbi who um, taught at a um, Jewish day school in Vancouver. Um, they were ordained um, members of um, the Jewish Orthodox religion. However, they were not employed full-time um, with, with a congregation. Their main source of employment was teaching. Um, therefore, they were denied clergy residence exemptions. Um, if you look out throughout um, the evidence that was presented, a lot of it was from both sides, um, was um, bringing in religious experts, having to go through religious texts, um, reading reports from the rabbinical court in order to kind of like make a decision as to whether or not um, teaching was kind of a valid integral part of the religion. Um, so in all of these um, cases, you've seen um, justices having to kind of make decisions on what counts as religion or religious practice or religious order, et cetera. And it should not be the place of our courts to have to do that. So um, in terms of how clergy residence exemptions are granted, there are, um, as I noted um, in the early 2000s, some limits were placed on um, the amount of clergy residence exemptions, um, the amount that could be granted. Um, so there are kind of three limits um, or three ways this is calculated. So it's, I, so it's the lesser amount of any one of the following. Um, the total annual income from the person's employer, um, one third of the total annual income of the employer or $10,000, whichever is greater. And then the total cost of rent utilities or the fair rental value of the residence if owned. Um, so just to walk through an example using statistics from um, the 2016 census, um, using the average um, annual income in Canada, um, so for the first calculated amount is um, if you made if a member of the religious clergy made forty seven thousand four hundred eighty seven that would be um, the first calculated amount the total annual income um, for the next calculated amount one third of the total annual income from their employer would be fifteen thousand eight hundred twenty nine that's one third of the total income of forty seven thousand four hundred eighty seven um, and that is greater than ten thousand. So for that calculated amount, you would go with the 15,000 number. And then finally, for the last calculated amount, um, the total cost of rent utilities or the fair rental value um, using the average shelter costs in Canada um, throughout an entire year for one person would be um, $12,024. So um, if you were filling this out, um, the court, the clergy residence exemption um, form would have you calculate each three of these amounts. And finally, you would select whichever number is the least, which um, happens to be the $12,024. Um, so that's the amount that you would put down and that would be the amount that um, that clergy member would be eligible to deduct. Um, off their tax returns. So looking at the numbers for this, um, in the final report, I have um, laid out the different numbers for all of the provinces. However, just because um, in the interest of having it a uh, size that is readable and um, the fact that we are in BC, I've just put in the grand total and the British Columbia members. Um, so overall um, in 2017, this is the most recent year that um, 
the um, statistics are available for. Um, the average amount, um, the total dollar amount exempted under CREs was $394,726, which is pretty substantial. Um, and with the average amount um, exempted being $14,544 as well. Um, in BC, um, it's actually a little higher. So um, there is 67, around 67 million exempted and the average amount exempted um, by return or per person was $15,303.64. In terms of looking at um, it, per capita. So in looking at to see, um, because we're exempting this amount, how much is the average um, Canadian going to have to take on? What's the tax burden of that um, for everyone else? Because um, it's um, clergy are being uh, exempted. Um, in Canada as a total, um, it is $11.23. Um, but in BC, it is also slightly higher. So um, the average British Columbian um, is, um, has to take on an extra $14.45 because religious clergy are being exempted this amount. Um, as well, um, just another figure as well, this shows the total number of returns as well as the dollar amount that were exempted over um, the past um, five most, six most recent years available from 2011 to 2017. And you'll notice that um, overall, it's just a slight, slight trend, um, a slight rise as well. Um, and if we look a little further, um, looking at around the past 10 years or so, um, not all of the numbers are available um, because they have yet to be calculated and that takes a while. Um, but going back to 2017, which is the year we have the most um, recent numbers for, um, Overall, that $394,726 um, in clergy residence exemptions um, that were given to members of religious clergy amounted to 95 million in potential uncollected tax revenue, um, which is pretty substantial um, to be um, not collecting that when we could be collecting it and putting it towards a lot of things. Um, such as um, the COVID wage food subsidy, um, which is roughly like a hundred million um, dollars as well. So there's a lot of things we could be using this for. Um, and projections from the Ministry of Finance um, have it down that by um, this year, 2021, um, up to $105 million could potentially go uncollected in tax revenue due to um, clergy residence exemptions. So just in conclusion, um, I don't know how to say this, but the existence of clergy residence exemption is not good. Um, we shouldn't be giving religion the automatic benefit of doubt and just presume that it is good and therefore worthy of a tax break. But we, sh we shouldn't be doing that. Um, as well, the way that the clergy residence exemptions are set up currently is that it is unequally structured. Um, Christianity is used as the benchmark, it's used as a norm, and when looking at um, some of the court cases as well, um, we see that um, Christian organizations um, more often than not um, have been given more of a pass and because it is easier to kind of approve um, that they meet the requirements based on the language and what was looked for when initially kind of constructing the legislation. Um, as well, it has forced the state to weigh in on matters of religious tradition, which uh, the courts shouldn't have to be doing as well. They shouldn't have to be quoting the Bible or the Torah, etc., as ha has been done in many of these cases. Um, yeah, so that is all in clergy residence exemptions. Um, the final report should be coming out very soon, um, but thank you for listening and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, etc., I'd love to hear them.